both started shuffling their hands really fast, I felt like the, I felt like time was going faster. <laughs> <laughs> They're in tune with one another. Yeah. So Birds of Paradise They're number bombing. two. And here comes a Diagraph Ghoul and pass. So now Brandon, if he has a land, he's gonna have access to four mana. This is the pivotal turn. Does he have a hunt master? Does he have a birthing pod? He has a blade splicer. Not too bad. Blade, well, Blade Spicer is also in this matchup. Yeah. It's about as good as it gets. Yeah, it's the best card. There's a Mortar Pot. He's going to kill off that. He's going to Tragic Slip. He's going to get him for two. So he used a card and a half, practically, to take care of that, that Blade Spicer. Zombies, you need to do that, though. Yeah, I mean, that's the reason that this matchup is so well position for Niapod is that you just have to invest so many cards as the black card zombie player. Like, Hank was praying for uh, for Daniel Weiser to win that match. He does not want to play against Niapod in the finals and ruin his perfect score. You know, one of the things I talked about is the fact that, you know, zombies rise to power again in uh, Standard has really... Uh, Kind of it, the reason it's been waning so much recently is because Niapod is picking up steam again, and mm -hmm. Niapod is a deck that plays four blade splicers. Mm -hmm. So as you see, Brandon actually didn't do anything with his turn. He's flooding. He's got a township, but he's only got an absence pilgrim and a bird's paradise to hold the fort. Can not activate that township this oh, turn? So Stephen can a Stephon can actually get this game. Yeah, it's Stefan, right? Yeah, Stefan. I'm so bad at saying that name. Can Stephen we just have Hink. him change his name to Frank? Frank Stephon. Hink? Stephen. Stephen. All right. There's a there's a Drops Messenger dropping Brandon to 14. And Bra Brandon is going to need a big card off the top. A force is not going to do it. No, it's not. And I feel like he has just drawn lands and a mana guy. He kept, like... Two mana guys, a blade splicer, and a township, and now he's just drawing nothing. Let's see, so Stefan is uh, given a few options this turn, but none of them are really great. He's gonna sign and blend himself. I'm gonna 18. Draw some more cards, try to find some spot removal. He has Probably a mortar pod. A card advantage. Brand's going to respond to this, probably, by activating his township. Yes. Uh, Stephen offers up trade. Uh, I mean, if you're Brandon, you kind of don't want to take it because you'd rather be able to just eat it. 3-3 yeah. Pilgrim the next turn, but in the same sense, like just dropping a 9 here is so dangerous, especially when your opponent has the Mortar Pod with the token and the Giralt's Messenger. So it's just going to be tough for him. He's got to make the trade there if he wants to survive. And Brandon getting really flooded here. I mean, the only cards he's really drawn this game besides a single Blade Splicer are yeah. lands and one mana mana accelerators and even if he had drawn more mana accelerators he'd be okay but it's just been lands for him off the top repeatedly <laughs> seven's really got to think this one through gonna equip the mortar pod onto the messenger yep Ryan's okay with that All right, and uh, <laughs> the bird is gonna get one counter. <laughs> bird becoming a two-three, but gets verdict. So sad. We're gonna be seeing uh, game two. Takes care of that. Yep. And that's it. Brandon Nelson packing this one up. Not really the best draw from Brandon Nelson there. No, it wasn't. His opener was fine. I mean, he uh, he didn't have much action, but. Yeah. 
he had a blade splicer, he had some accelerators, he had a gravity township, and that's the type of hand that it's not the worst against a matchup like that. You know, you can your your early bird and elf are gonna you know soak up some of the removal. You have a blade splicer after they've probably used removal spell on a mana guy. And the top of his deck was not kind to him at all. That was that was brutal for him. So I have we have another question coming up. There is a card from the set that not only would go in trading post, but would go in my five color messy reanimator deck. Uh, it costs three mana, and what it reads is all lands you control can be city brasses that don't pay life, that make you lose life, and it also adds mana. And right, it's pretty much a vessel of endless rest, but it also makes all your lands do that. And it, it's it's per, it's like my favorite card in the set. It's perfect for everything I do. So uh, it also casts three tusk. So what is the name of that card? Because that is by far my favorite card so far. I love that card in this set. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. It costs three colorless. I'm a and big fan of Rakdos Return. Hmm? Yeah, this is the premium question. This is the premium question. So send that answer to hashtag SCG Premium, and you'll win a full year of SCG Premium. Also, interesting question. At Rakdos Return. Uh, is that second S really necessary on that? Rakdos's return? Yes, it is. Because Rakdos is its name, and it's his return. So, I mean. If it I says don't Rakdos return, that. it sounds kind of like. I but you know. could have the apostrophe there, and it'd still be Rakdos return without the extra S. What extra S? Oh, you just Rakdos with an apostrophe without the S? Yeah, it'd still be Rakdos. All right, so here's the question, guys. I'm repeating it one more time. There is an artifact that costs three mana in this set that taps to produce any colored mana. Would you like me to read the text? Yeah, we can it? just read. Yeah, read the text of the card. But it is my favorite card. Not only is it an artifact called Trading Post, but I play this five color deck that's really sweet because I love Thrag Test and Unbearable Rights, and and like Desperate Raven and Faithless Suiting. And this is a perfect card for that deck. So read it up. Three colorless artifact rare. Lands you control have, end quote, tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, end quote. And then you can tap the artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So if it's in play, not only does it accelerate you, but you can tap for whatever you want. And that's why I love it. I, oh, I love this land. I love this artifact. I'm going to get three right away. I want to pre-order them. All right, let's go back to the finals. Shoebox, can you go pre-order three, four of those for me? All right, thank you. All right, so Stephen is up a game, or Stephen. Stephen. <laughs> I can't do it. Stephen. Stephen is up a game. I'm so sorry, Stephen. When you watch your replays again, you're going to hate me. Uh, he's probably going to hate me. He's going to hate me. And uh, it's good reason, Brad. He's Come up on. a game, but I definitely think that Brandon is still favored in this match. Um, I mean, there's enough Even variance in Magic where if you're down a game, I don't really think you can... I think you're favorite to win the match. I mean, I think he's I like 90% favorite to win the total I'm match. I'm very bad at statistics. <laughs> but I do. If we play Rug Delver Mirror, I will easily win 9 out of 10 matches. Easily. 2 0, actually. <laughs> we will go 18 and 2. Correct. The, the mirror is really skill intensive. I'm like, yeah, I know. But you, know <laughs> you know the matches are best of 7, though, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would still be absolutely. Would you guys want to watch upwards of seventy rug mirror games? <laughs> rug mirror way? games between Brad and I. All right, and we're going on to hour forty-three. Currently, the game score is twenty-three to twenty just, in favor of Brad. I, just, I was just told that we're getting cupcakes. How did we get cupcakes? Somebody gave us cupcakes. That was the sweetest thing ever. That is so awesome. Wait, are they both for JBL or for us? Okay, good. <laughs> I thought they were both for you. <laughs> People bring me cupcakes. <laughs> oh, I have to... We have to go say thank you. Yes. After the oh, top eight, you'll show us who they are. I don't know who they are, but... And they're in the cutest little containers. Come back to us real quick. Come back. We'll show it off. Yeah. 
Welcome back real quick. Look at this. It's like in the yeah. cutest little container. Oh my gosh, we were giving cupcakes. We were giving fail cake. Somebody they fail? Went, it must be fail cake. I don't think they are. There's a card with it Oh too. my gosh, is it red velvet cake? Oh, I want this in my face right now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to All wait. Right. I'm gonna wait a little Thanks bit. Thanks for doing that for us, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the players are shuffled up. They're drawing their sevens. And so let's see. All right, and oh, that's so sad. Brandon down a game, mulliganing to six. <laughs> Stefan is keeping his seven, and he's like, "Yay, variants me!" And when you when, okay, for those of you who uh, perhaps might go and play poker casually from time to time, if the person who you're in a hand against looks like Stefan oh, looks like. You have to be incredibly scared. The leaning back in the chair and bobbing back and forth is normally a uh, a sign of a strength. Very, very, very intense strength. But the problem with that is, I think it gets reversed when you're with a friend playing magic. <laughs> oh, yeah, in, in magic, in magic, it's not yeah, nearly yeah. as relevant, and it's not relevant when the game hasn't started. The biggest yet. tell that I have is here's the biggest. I will give you guys while they're shuffling. Bring it back to us. Sorry. I have, I have an important tell to tell you guys that I actually think is, a, don't sigh at me, I, it's important, this is a good tell, this is a learning experience. When you're playing limited, and you think your opponent has a removal spell, and you have a creature or two in play and one of them is good, if you play an additional creature from your hand, look at his eyes. If his eye sees the new creature, then instantly goes straight to the other creature that you have in play that is good, just subconsciously he looks at both creatures, he's comparing them to know if he wants to, which one to kill. And then that'll tell you if he has an instant speed removal spell in his hand. It's a definitely like a really good trick that I use. And like you, that's what I use. I use where your eyes are at in the match. And that's also a really important one. Uh, if, if somebody looks at the card they draw for more than one second, uh, they drew a blank. Yeah. That's... Yeah, you process. If you draw a spell that's really good, your eyes instantly go to the game. Yeah, your wheels you are can, turning. You can watch somebody's eyes just uh, bam right off of it. Yeah, if you yeah. look at it and you just stare at it, you, they they're like, hmm, I should pretend this is pocket aces. Yeah, <laughs> and it's nothing. Longer, uh, I mean, the longer you look, they look at a card. The worse, the it worse is. it is. Yeah, we're going back now. Sorry. Thank you for that short, brief <laughs> explanation on eye contact. Yeah, no, I mean, it's good. It's, it is. That's it's, actually it's, Those are gone. really important lessons, and I think that those are the types of things We'll tell different eye separate. contact ones all day. Yeah, we can just talk about tells and magic yeah. from time to time. That's something people don't really talk about much. No, we don't actually talk about tells. All right, so Brandon Nelson starts the game off with Carpaline Gorge. <sighs> Both players have their best lands without, uh, without doing anything with them, but, man, Scars are rotating out. They're so pretty and good. I'm going to yeah. miss Scars duels. Stools are pretty nice. All right, Brandon tanking on his land drop. And spirit, Ooh. that's rough. Oh, yeah, Naming spirit on that. Name spirit on your one strength group, guys. But yeah, you got to start getting that damage in. Yeah, so essentially that's just going to be a colorless land now for the rest of the game. But Strangler Guys is a pretty good card against Stefan's deck. Yes, it's it's going to give him at least two different creatures. Uh, it's worth it, especially, didn't I, did I not see a, a planes in his hand? There's no planes in his hand. No, there's okay, there's a mountain, so at least the Huntmaster can hit play, they're just the Angel can't. So here's a Mortar Pod. Let's say right, he so really, he has oh. a forest, and he has a mountain, and he has a hunt master. So at least he has something to operate on. Yeah, if he has a borderland ranger, he's you know everything's gravy in the navy. Birthing pod. That is kind of a borderland ranger. Yeah. Everything's gravy in the navy. I like that. I'm gonna start using that. Everybody's gonna start using that. It's the wave of the future. <laughs> we should get shirts that it's just an ocean of gravy that a, a, a navy ship is riding on. All right, anyway, sign and blood for uh, Stefan. He's going to drop to uh, 14, and he's going to draw some cards. Tag for zero. 
strong. Did he really? But what if he wants to use what if he wants block? to block and then do something? So he's gonna gut shot tragic slip it? That's a lot of work to deal with a Yeah, I feel reverse. like using I feel like using the creature in play is better than using the gut shot. It's just less information. The creature in play does nothing. I'm messed with the fells, Brandon. I'm gonna jump back up to 20 here. Now he also has this uh, birthing pod, which can do a number of fun and exciting things for him here. Maybe he wants to go find a wolf here, Silverheart. Perhaps well, an acidic slime is his cup of tea right so now. So we can actually just kill both creatures in play. Yeah. All right, so everything is down. Let's see if Brandon has a follow-up. But having birthing pod against a zombie pod player or zombie. Oh, this is brutal. Here what comes Elvish Visionary, into, which becomes a blade splicer, or actually Ooh. probably becomes a borderline ranger. Yeah, with with because with oblivion ring and restoration angel in hand, it becomes yeah. a borderline ranger. Oh, and he has a bird, so he's gonna pay two life using the uh, Frexia ability of birthing pod. Yeah, then he might just make a blade splicer to be honest. All right, he doesn't want to put the birds in play. Plans. <sighs> All right, it's a ton of lands for Hank, but he's going to equip his messenger and try to start burning out his opponent. That's at a million life points. Yep. So Brandon, that at it. Eighteen here. Easily jump back to 20 by turning this borderline ranger into a hunt master if he so desires. Uh, can then use the angel in his hand to blink that hunt master. So he can pay two life to use birthing pod, go to 16, get a hunt master, go to 18, blink the hunt master, go to 20, and then have the, the ridiculous army in play. <laughs> so that's one line he could take. I mean, all that really happens now is Brandon just gets to activate Birthing Pot every turn, and it's just, it's so good. Yeah, or I mean, he can also just uh, O-Ring Messenger and... No, he can't O-Ring it because he's got the uh, Mortar Pot equipped Oh, to you're it. right, you're right, you're right, you're right. So he's just gonna go get Hummaster and be able to blink that next turn. Like, because he didn't play a spell this turn, it can flip. That Huntmaster can now flip, which is just awesome. And then he can blink it back with the Restoration, so... One of the sweetest plays of Birthing Pod or Aether Vial from Limited. That's that I really love. Uh, from the Aether Vial from, uh, uh, what's his name? Took second in the world, uh, the Players' Championships. Uh, Shata? Yeah, Shata. His Aether Vial, Ravager of the Fell trick. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Let me put this in the play. He didn't play anything? So why is... He doesn't have to... Okay, so he ravagered the messenger, but I think he forgot that it was equipped, so he in response shot, but I don't think he needed to do that. I so not. that was a little uh, blunder for uh, Stefan. So, we have looking a, at the board now, um, Stefan, having sacrificed such awesome messenger, can't really pl apply any more pressure to Brandon here. Brandon no. has the angel in hand, so. No, Brandon's definitely in the driver's seat. He's got Restoration Angel. He's going to flip that over. Um, Stefan's going to start putting some more pressure, some more creatures on the board, but Brandon's like, dude, this is my game plan. This is how I win. I just put all the creatures on the battlefield. Simply four mana Restoration Angel. Gains him to life, adds a 2-2 two -two to the board. Pretty good. He's just... They're going to go to game three. He, he's had enough. He understands how this goes. Well, it was lethal, too. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I mean, he could have been fighting an Inferno Titan that turn. If Brian's so sorry. Like, that was... Yeah, if he kept Zalus in play, uh, if he kept it. But, uh... You definitely keeps Alice. Yeah. 
That's gross. All Black Red Zombies guys coming to play tapped. Will they shuffle? Do we want to do one more eye contact trick? Let's do one more. Sorry, Choi. I'm loving this. This is fun. So Talk another magic tells. Yeah, another tell that I think is very important is if you're playing against a combo player, or if you feel behind, like he's gonna assemble something that wins the game. The, okay, bad combo players. The turn before they combo. This this is them before that turn, and the turn before they combo. This is them. They're very what distinct. Forward, arms together. They're not going to try to combo you the next turn. Shoulders apart, further away from the table, they are going to try to cast a tendrils of agony with yeah, yeah. a lot of storm. Another thing is like, let's say it's your turn and you're thinking what to do because your decisions are gonna make change their decisions. Let's say it's a creature combo deck or something. Mm -hmm. Depending on like, one of the big tells that I try to use is where their eyes are at. So you keep don't focus your your eyes on them. Wait 20 seconds while you're figuring your stuff out, and then immediately look at their eyes. And that tells you what's happening. If their eyes are looking at you, they have everything they need. They need to react to whatever you're going to do. So the, they don't have the information they need yet to process anything. They've already done that. So they're just looking at you, figuring out what you're going to do. This is high level too. This is like the high level combo players. But if they still need to process information, they don't have everything they need, their eyes are going to be scattered on the board, still doing math, figuring out the lines that they should take, because they don't have it processed yet. Yeah. So then, Looking at the board is generally weakness. Looking yeah. at the opponent is when you feel like you're at parity. Yeah. And if, you're looking, if your opponent is like looking yeah. away from the table, but still actively like very much involved in the game, or talkative and looking away from the table, they're insanely strong. Yeah, they're, they're just going to yeah. beat you. You can't, you can't win just, anymore. You're, you're dead. <laughs> they're just like, all right, let me uh, let me check my uh, text messages and oh yeah, okay, uh, ritual, 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 ritual. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot yeah. of interesting stuff written by a guy named Mike Caro, and it, it's not written specifically for magic, but mm -hmm. you can apply almost all the things he talks about to magic, and they work. Yeah. So if if you want to get better at reading people, if you're thinking about you know, oh, I want to win a PDQ, and you know, I think that my technical play is really tight, but you know, I always get into these situations where I didn't play around this certain car and it made me lose. You can really start tightening those areas, you know, those screws of your yeah. game. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, well, those are the natural talent things. But no, those are those are skills that are honed just in the way that all of your other skills are honed. Yep. And, and Also, we should thank Frosted. Uh, I suppose the person who gave us these cupcakes, yeah. they also gave us a card. So, uh, gotfrosted.com. Delicious cupcakes. Thank yes. you very much. For and if you give us free food. stuff, we will promote you too. That's true. <laughs> I have no shame. But uh, but we're going to head back to the match now, play out the final game of the SCG Open Minneapolis Standard Open. I said open twice. I got to get better at those things. I got to get better. The SCG Standard Open. If you say open. it twice, you can just say closed once and it'll cancel it out. Oh, the SCG Open Minneapolis Standard Closed. Open. Open. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so looks like Stefan is uh, yeah, taking them mulligan. Going down to six on the play here. Brennan's like, I'm okay with this. I've been the one mulligan in most of my matches. Well, actually, no, he's been very lucky in uh, a lot of the games in this top four. A mulligan to three. <laughs> Stefan's now going to six. The mulligan to three. You almost have to wonder. Come on, mulligan to three. That's, That's so I, rare. I've seen one mulligan to three my entire life. I've mulligan to three. Okay, so on moto, I've mulligan to zero before, just because I go down to three and I just want to see what he's playing. Um, but like, I think I've mulligan to four twice or three times in my life, and I've mulligan to three once. I probably had to mulligan to four way more times than three. All right, so he keeps with six cards. That's good. We're gonna actually see a game. Turn one, grave crawl, crawler on. Uh, the right by Copperline on the left. No birds. That's a second grave crawler attacking Brandon down to 18. Now Brandon's going to take a second turn, but without a birds, that doesn't mean he's going to be able to play anything really that big this turn. So he top decked a birds. Uh, turn a little bit late, but so be it. He doesn't have a white source for that purge that he kept in his opening ham. But uh, there is a top decked mortar pod to kill that birds, keeping Brandon off of white, putting him down to 14. It's pretty good. All right, let's see if he's got a Borderland Ranger to get white mana. That's going to be the most important. He does have a mana. He does have Borderland. That's going to get him mana for not only Blade Spice or Restoration Angel and Social Purge, which are all trapped in Brandon's hand. Pretty nice for him. Yeah. 
But uh, if Stefan draws a swamp or an untapped black source, he is going to be able to play that messenger. If not, it's going to be stuck in his hand. That's that's the rough thing. He, there is a Dragon Skull Summit, so he's going to be able to play a messenger. Brandon's choice now is if he wants to block one of these crawlers to not go to 10 life. And I don't think you block. I no. mean, it's just, there's such little value. Yeah. So here is a third source for a messenger. That drops Brandon to eight. It's going to be pretty good here. It's going to be very good. Brandon isn't going to have a breather to cast this purge. He needs to be able to, like, play some more spells and, and, and purge a guy. So with the board position as is, I feel like getting, getting a purge on the table is good unless you have a hunt master. Especially since he has another birds. He has another birds? I think he, I think there's a birds in there, isn't there? Yeah, there's oh, a birds yeah, in there. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So he can he can play purge birds or he can play splicer birds and the next turn he he'll be able to do angel purge unless Stefan takes care of that uh, mortar that bird with a mortar pod. This is, this is a big turn for Brandon. Brandon has to find... This is his make or break turn. Yeah, he has to find the, the lane to get through this. He's at eight life. He's going to play a birds. And is he gonna play Blade Splicer or hold Purge? I like Blade Splicer here, just so you can double up spell next turn. No, he's just gonna use Purge. We are one Flames of the Firebrand away. Ooh, I, 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 I mean, Stefan knows he has purges, and he's holding three mana for the first time in the game. So, gut shot the birds, purge the messenger. That drops Stefan to 18. And Tragic Slip, oh wow. Tragic Slip the messenger now. Gut shot in response to kill the birds to get Morbid, to shoot him for two, to keep that messenger on the table, to get a 4-3 and attack with two two ones. Pretty nice. So Brandon now down to two. two. If he takes it, he might just have to block just to save two life and hope to draw like a hundred. Yeah, I mean, master it's pretty hard to go to two against a. Uh, I mean, we can miracle a bonfire maybe. It's pretty good. And that'll kill off the, the table, and uh, if seven doesn't, yeah, he definitely needed a bonfire there. Well, this is where having a thrag tusk really would would. This is where I'd like a Thrag Tusk in, in Brandon's deck. But yeah, I don't know how he gets out of this. At, at four life, no more life gain. He can't play a Hunt Master, doesn't have one. He can play a Blade Splicer, but that's not going to be good since since uh, Hink is able to put Mortar Pot on that Drops Messenger, making yep. it a 4-4. Four, four. Just out of range for that yep. Golem token. So he is just going to play a Blade Splicer. He's going to have a Golem to be able to chump block. Uh, the Golem is going to be able to block the Gravecrawler and the Blade Splicer chump block the Messenger. But if, uh, yeah, there it is. And that's the game. Yep. Falconrath Aristocrat. Falconrath Aristocrat is enough to take that one down. Hink did not lose a single match all tournament. Nope. And he only dropped, what, three games? One in each of the, in the top eight? Yep. Dropped three games in the top eight. All right. Welcome back, everyone. That was that was a that was a pretty awesome match. I, I like yeah, that one. An excellent, excellent.